Mary Myers. And Monique Dykeman. Reporting from Monique's living room. The memory is fresh in your head, reading Dr. Seuss before bed. Exactly what do you recall? Can you remember them all? We have a film that will feature the Brunick students and teachers. The th we think the teachers will surpass the memory of the student class. Now let's see how the students and teachers hypothesize. <laughs> Teachers, because they have little kids and they've read Dr. Seuss books to them, and students probably haven't read them in three or four years. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What was that? Can you say that again? <laughs> We're trying to figure out whether a higher proportion of students or a higher proportion of faculty can remember more Dr. Seuss rhymes. Right. So, who do you think will remember more and why? Faculty, because they're older and they've been reading it longer. I say us. I don't know any Dr. C's lines personally. But I do. Alright, let's hear one, so. It's like... <laughs> That's what you never read that book? I don't know, man. It's uh, like red fish, blue fish. I say fat. One one fish, two fish. <laughs> Something like that. So you think the student? I don't know any. I already told you that. I do. All right, let's hear some more. You're recording. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say faculty. I say students. We are here reporting on a surprising new statistic. Students at Broadneck High School have shown to have an approximately equal knowledge of Dr. Seuss poems compared to our faculty. To prove this, we used a two-sample t-test. The conditions to perform a two-sample t-test are randomization, independence, 10%, and nearly normal. Tell me all that you thrown away. Find out games you don't want to play. You are the only one that needs to know. No, they're, they're quite cool actually. They're, the leather's perforated in the front. It allows them to breathe. You can really? move my feet? Yeah. Okay, watch this. <laughs> I'm following you just like you taught me. Oops, I didn't follow very well. Wait, our null hypothesis is that the mean number of correct responses from faculty minus the mean correct number of responses from students is equal to zero. Our alternate hypothesis is that the mean number of correct responses from faculty minus the mean number of correct responses from students is greater than zero. This means we think the faculty will remember more. Monique already stated the conditions. The degrees of freedom would be 76.505 and we came up with a t-score of negative 9 or 0.9617 and a p-value of 0.8304. Since our p-value of 0.8304 is high, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. This suggests that there is no difference in the mean number of stanzas remembered by the students and faculty. Fabulous. It's been one week since you looked at me. Cock your head to the side and said I'm angry. Five days since you laughed at me. Saying get that together, come back and see me. Three days since the living room. I realized it's all my fault but couldn't tell you. Yesterday you'd forgiven me. But it'll still be today till I say I'm sorry. Hold it now I'll watch the hood wink. Cause I make you stop think. You'll think you're looking at Aquaman. I summon fish too. Here is some footage of some of the responses from students and faculty. This is my personal favorite. <laughs> Could you? Would you with a goat? Uh. Not many things I'd do with a goat. <laughs> oh, with that one? The second one? Yes. <laughs> and the instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something. Oh my god, Forrest Gump! <laughs> <laughs> She's recording. Shut up.
Then, out of the box, came thing two and thing one, and they ran to us fast. They said, how do you do? Would you like to shake hands, or are they covered in goo? Um, then out of the box came thing two and thing one, and they ran to us fast. They said, how do you do? Would you like to shake hands? No, how about you? <laughs> Winter. Winter day? No. Summer? No. The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play, so we sat in the house on that cold, cold, wet day. Yeah. from Coach Nowak and Dan Fitzgerald. The, the number of students who are, excuse me, the number of text messages a, the average kid in high school receives in one day, in a, one day, I'm telling you, one day is 80. That is sinful. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to Derek Zoolander's Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good and Want to Learn How to Do Other Stuff Good, too. And here, we take our yeah, children very seriously. It's a pretty sweet shirt. I guess that's why I'm here, but this is really why I'm here, for the kids. It's about the kids. enough people, we could have been biased by selecting people that we felt would know it or selecting people who we didn't think would know it instead of using a completely random sample, we used our convenience sample, which could have swayed the data. Just no, I'm not going to dance. Please, just... Monique, I will not dance. Just a little. I don't, I'm not <laughs> feeling any kind of surprise. I don't feel startled at all, or I'd say nonplussed. I just, I'm not feeling it. Oh, okay. You, you want me to suppose why there would be no difference? Okay. Um, I guess there's a. I, I guess maybe there's like a some sort of parody in the amount of exposure we have. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the adults who've been exposed more because they've read them have been exposed. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I was surprised. I thought the faculty would be more. Well, really, it's so cool there. What about you, Stone? Big man? Come on. <laughs> Pain. 